Hi, Peter Charles here from Hooked Life Fly Fishing. And today I'd like to show you how to tie a fly that has more than one bead on it. In this case I call it the bubble bead pheasant tail. And the reason for tying flies like this is we want to imitate a particular stage in a mayfly's life. Now when uh, mayflies are getting ready to emerge, their bodies expand uh, with gas which makes them buoyant and they float to the surface. However, they don't want to be up there. That's where the fish are and they're going to get eaten. So they try to swim back down and then they float back up and then they swim back down and they float back up and finally they get to the surface and they emerge. And it's during this up and down stage that a lot of them get eaten. Uh, and if you've ever heard of the Liza Ring lift, that's what it imitates. Sometimes they'll just go straight up and pop out, but other times they will be going doing this up and down business. What the beads that I'm using today imitate is that glowing look that you get from the abdomen of one of these insects when they puff up with gas. Uh, during one of my fishing trips uh, last season, I happened to be fortunate enough to actually see this uh, go on. I was just fishing away and all of a sudden I got a little spark of light caught my eye and I turned to look to see uh, a nymph go to the surface open its uh, skin and out came the adult and it flew away. And it was great to see the whole process, but what caught my eye was that little spark of light uh, from the sun reflecting off of the uh, bubbles in, under their skin. It's really quite bright. And if you've ever seen a flashback nymph style of uh, tying nymphs, that's what that uh, flashback imitates is the, the, the glow that you get from the uh, gas bubble. And uh, this is a time when big fish often show up. Uh, I've seen big fish and I've caught big fish uh, when the uh, mayflies are swimming to the surface and I've done a lifting motion to get that kind of up and down motion going. It, it's very, very effective and of, often can induce a take. And I think you might have heard that expression, induce a take, and that's what that means. Start lifting, pumping. And when you're doing that, the important thing is you just don't drop the rod tip. You go down nice and smoothly and evenly so you stay in contact with the fly because the fish can take it on the drop as well as on the rise. So anyway, let's get in, uh, going with the tie. It's very simple, but it has uh, three, actually three beads in it. So it'll show you how to cope with multiple beads in a pattern. Okay, let's get into the materials. Now the hook I'm using today is a Daiichi 1770 in a size 16. And you'll notice that curve. It's a swimming nymph hook. Now, I've got I have two minds about this hook. First off, it's got a great profile. I mean, it really, really gets big fish interested. I've probably hooked up more big fish on this style of hook, but there's a problem. It's hard to keep them on. I don't know what is it is about the bend of this hook or maybe the springiness of it or whatever it is, but I lose more than I land. But anyway, I have the fun of hooking them and fighting them for a while, so I guess it's worth that. And the fact is it works as, a, as a, an, a, an effective bend because mayflies, when they're swimming, are like this. They've got this arch in the back, and this is what this hook imitates. So it's rather cool. Our thread is a dark brown in 8 hot. We're going to use some pheasant tail for the, uh, for the body and the tail. And I'm going to show you some options. Um, you can also add legs to this pattern. You don't have to if you don't want to. Swimming nymphs, the legs are not very noticeable. Uh, crawler nymphs, their legs are out to the side like this. But uh, swimming nymphs, they tuck them underneath the body. So if you're dealing with a crawler imitation, you might want legs sticking out. If you're dealing with a swimming Im imitation, maybe it's not so important. But some things you can do. You can add a brown hackle for uh, a throat to imitate uh, a swimming nymph tucking its legs underneath. You could use some hen hackle, and you, it's, sometimes it's trouble finding a small feather in there, but really strip it down. You want to go really sparse, and then you can tie on that hackle and create the effect of crawler legs going out. And the other thing is you can go back to the pheasant tail, and you're tying on two lots of pheasant tail, one going that way to imitate the tail and the body, the other one going that way to do the uh, wing case and the legs. So that's another alternative is using pheasant tail to produce legs. I'm not going to tie on anything today. I'm just going to show you the basic pattern. 
but keep these options in mind that you can do uh, three ways to put legs on this type of fly. But if you're doing a swimming nymph, you don't really have to. So let's get started. Better put my, my eyes on so I can see what I'm doing. I've got two kinds of beads on here. This black one is tungsten. It's a three thirty seconds of an inch bead. These two clear beads are embroidery beads. They're meant for uh, putting a needle and thread through and sewing them into fabric. So as a consequence, the hole in them is large and it makes it easy to thread onto a hook. There are other beads out there where the holes are quite small and you won't be able to get them around the bend of the hook. So when you're going out to buy beads from a craft shop, shop or a fabric shop, make sure you're getting beads that have the large opening so you can get them on the hook. Now you can see the way that slipped around, so I'm just going to take my thread and push them up. Now as I wind back down, of course they're going to slide, but that's okay. We'll fix that in a minute. Okay, now we're going to take our pheasant tail and take off three or four barbs. Now make sure the tips are aligned. Now here's a, another point. Crawler nymphs tend to have really long tails. Swimming nymphs tend to have shorter ones. So I'm going to do a swimming nymph, so I'm going to put in a short tail. If I was doing a crawler lymph nymph, I would have my tails longer. So, oh, just about there, maybe less than a quarter of an inch. Okay, pull that out of the way. Now advance the thread. You see how it's moving the beads out of the way? Now do this very carefully because it's so easy to break these things. I'm going to get my hackle pliers. Get a good grip on them. I'm just going to put a few, no tension really, I'm just going to put a few twists, just a few. Now I'm just going to be, wind that on and be careful of the hook point. Now scrunch that up into the bead. I'm going to leave it pointing down for a reason. One of the advantages of a rotary vise. And I'm just going to tie that in. I'm going to take my hackle pliers off. Now, it's at this stage where we move our uh, thread over. So I have to whip finish, cut it off, and then restart it between the uh, last plastic bead and the tungsten bead. Now it's at this stage that you can tie in your legs, whether you're using uh, saddle hackle, hen hackle, or pheasant tail tips, however you want to do it, you can tie the legs in right now. However, because I'm doing a swimming nymph, I'm not going to bother with the legs. All I'm going to do is fold that wing case over. Now it's going to move around a bit, that's okay. Just make sure it's on top. Trim it off. And now we're going to whip finish. Now this is a pretty fragile fly. And I also like to uh, put a little bit of a a gloss to the uh, wing case. So I'm going to use some UV glue, some thick UV glue, to put a bead across the top of the wing case to, you know, keep everything solid, not won't come apart. At the same time, it adds that little bit of gloss to the wing case.
Okay, there's the bubble bead pheasant tail. You can tell by looking at these beads. It, they really do look translucent and they really will shine, especially when you've got a bit of sunlight to work with. Um, they will give the illusion of a body that's puffed up with gas. Very simple pattern to tie. Uh, you can knock off a bunch very quickly. And um, as I say, just remember, you're going to use a wise ring lift, pull it back up, but when you let it drop, make sure you keep uh, tension on it all the way back down. So if a fish hits while you're dropping, you'll feel it. So the bubble bead pheasant tail. Uh, it's a bit of a novel way to fish, and my, does it work. Cheers.